Clockwork Island is what I would expect one of these movies to be like. That's right, it's got set pieces, it's got memorable characters, and interesting interactions. In fact, one of the things that I've been thinking about ever since I saw this one is just like the atmosphere, the ambiance of this entire island. Some of the shots that I really like from this movie weren't even that integral to the plot. They're just the characters walking around exploring the city, and I really like that. Within the first 10 minutes, the Straw Hats get their ship stolen and find out that it's in Clockwork Island. It is this massive pillar containing an island on top with a clock tower on it. It's a pretty unique set piece. And their ship? Right on top of it. So now we know what they have to do. As they try to get their ship back, they get captured by brothers who are thieves, and let's talk about them, because I find them really interesting as characters. The first scene is them saying that they're thieves, but they don't actually have any stolen loot, something that I think describes these characters really well. At first you think they're bad guys who suck at their job, then it's realizing that these guys aren't bad guys. They don't even want to steal anything, really. They just stole the Going Merry so that the Straw Hats would have to go fight the bad guy pirates to free the island. And that's a pretty good twist on the Liberate Island formula. Besides that, we can see that one of them is willing to sacrifice everything for the other, life and limb. So you know, we're talking about someone willing to lose a limb for someone else. I'd say that parallels someone in particular in Luffy's life. And if that was it, that would be fine. Except that we keep looping on like Luffy for way too long and in every one of these sequences when we mention someone losing a limb, we always focus on Luffy and then we do like a weird flashback sequence and I know, I, I, I know who we're talking about. We don't have to cut to shakes, okay? I, I know. <clears throat> so, you know, they're trying a little bit too hard to put that imagery in your mind, but whatever. The kid at the beginning is so utterly proud of the fact that someone would be willing to risk it all for them and actually has to learn to put his own life on the line. And that's a really cool arc for him. There's also really strong beats that I wasn't expecting. For example, the Thief Brothers are apparently going to Clockwork Island to quote unquote steal the clock, except when they arrive, nobody cares. In fact, the people there are sad. They are so done being in the hands of the bad guy. Like, they don't care what you do with a clock. They just want to have their island back. You want to steal the clock? Yeah, knock yourself out. Sure, whatever. You're going to probably have to fight the bad guy pirate who has it. So, good luck, I guess? And, like, that is really sad. But I find that beautiful. Especially later on when we realize that the Thief Brothers also just want to get their island back. All of the things that they're telling the Straw Hats are a lie just to get them to fight the bad guys. Because their goal really never was theft. They just want their home back. The main bad guy for this movie is the Bear King and all of his crewmates. And honestly, I love the Bear King as a character. He has like some plans of what he's going to do to become Pirate King through some kind of weapon, kind of like Alabasta. But he's not threatening. He's just like a goofy guy. And I like that. At one point, Nami gets kidnapped and the Bear King asks to marry her. And when Nami rejects him, he tries to earn her marriage. And it's like oddly nice to have a bad guy that would also be the type of guy who would go through hoops like that. Because Nami got kidnapped for a lot of this, we get to see a lot of dynamics between her and the other bad guys. She rejects the Bear King's affection. She constantly corrects the Swordsman guy. And while she is technically in danger, it's like lighthearted fun danger for the most part. She is like simultaneously kidnapped and also stealing money through card games, you know? So unlike the first movie, everyone in this movie gets a proper fight more or less. Which is good because somehow all of the Straw Hats get one-tapped really quick the first time around. Which, you know, it's a bit much, but whatever. They get the round twos, and when they do, it's pretty hype. They get their comeback fight. That's very needed, considering how most of them got beaten up and tossed around in one way or another. Especially Sanji. Sanji got messed up bad in this movie. But he also got, like, one of the coolest fight scenes in this entire movie. Like, it is so well animated that I kind of just want to recommend you go back and watch, if not the whole movie, this scene, because it's pretty hype. Due to the structure of the clock tower, they have to climb to reach the Bear King, and there's like a ton of traps along the way. There's like spikes and falling debris, they fall down slides. It's a lot of set pieces. As the Straw Hats fight the bad guys, they're constantly destroying bits of the tower, which is just great. Like walls collapse, floors crumble. It's way more dynamic than in the first movie, you know? It, <laughs> it feels like we actually got more time and budget on this one, and it feels like we're actually able to get some good closure on this one. 
if the first one let me down for feeling like filler in a bad way, then this one pretty much left me satisfied. It's what I would expect one of these movies to be like, more or less. What I wanted was set pieces, good character interactions, unique side stories, and I'm gonna say this one delivered on that. 